how are we doing guys welcome back to the channel and today i have another history video for you guys i've done a few history videos in the past where i talk about rotations and spawn rates and um, mob density and mob positioning and types of mobs the real micro look at the rooms um, today I'm going to go into the micro later on in the video like I have done in the past because the micro is very important but something that's just as important if not slightly more important than the micro information about Histria is the macro, the overview look. So you'll see a spreadsheet in front of you right now that's going to have a bunch of different numbers that's going to look very confusing. I'm going to go over this spreadsheet and I'm going to go over what these numbers mean because it's very important before we start talking about the micro that we look at the overview because history does need to change. There are some limitations, some pretty serious limitations with what we have available right now in history on the macro side and on the micro side that do need to change with the direction console is going to be going in the future. We are currently getting succession, and as everyone knows, succession for the majority of the classes, if not almost all the classes, is a superior grinder than awakening. And also, we haven't even got that's in awakening in its current state on console. There are more awakening buffs that are coming to the console for classes that are also going to allow a lot of awakenings to be competitive with their succession counterparts in terms of grinding. And in some cases, even better than the succession counterparts in terms of grinding, which is really, really important because right now, depending on the class you have without succession being taken into consideration and without all these future awakening buffs taken into consideration, um, there are quite a few players, depending on their class, that are able to overclear their rooms and hit a, um, hit a cap in history that's really hard to uh, overcome because of the way that the mob densities are and the respawn rates. Both the micro and the macro have an effect on this. So that's what we're going to be tackling in this video is how to make history future proof and how to improve it for the player base. Because as you know, for people that have played this game for a while, we used to have a different set of mob densities and respawn rates in the past. Um, with these old mob densities and respawn rates it allowed a lot of flexibility because there was a lot of extra mobs and you were able to if you had more and more and more and more gear and we also got these buffs you were able to compensate so your trash per hour would always be going up there, there's obviously a cap on their end as well on the previous end um, you'd have to attach two different rooms together and obviously if you have some crazy clear uh, crazy clear speeds and you attach two rooms together there is a cap but that cap is exponentially high and i haven't seen anyone reach these kind of caps in history um, with the current pc gear from um, the people that i'm watching so i'm pretty much going to say it's it's pretty hard to get to that cap so we want to emulate that for console because right now um, there is a point depending on what class you're playing that when you hit a specific AP bracket, especially after succession, it's gonna that AP bracket might is probably gonna be lower, and after the awakening buffs as well that we'll receive, it's gonna be even lower for both sets, awakening and succession. Which means after you hit a certain point in your gear progression, there's less incentive for you to want to increase your gear. Because for me, there's two incentives: one is the PvP side of things, and one is the PvE side of things. So I keep pushing my gear and back in the past every time I push my gear to like the next bracket a little bit extra I see I'm getting a bit more money when I'm grinding which is a good feeling and then it also incentivizes me to do other things for example buy a villa buff it also incentivizes me to buy giant droughts or beast droughts it incentivizes me to um, be really efficient with my pools because I want to hit that maximum Whereas right now, the maximum trash that I'm getting with my current gear is capped at around 3.6, 3.7 000, and it doesn't matter how much AP I have over this or how efficiently I grind, or whether or not I'm using droughts. I don't even use droughts in my grinding anymore, and sometimes I don't even use the villa buff. I just put on the simple cron meal, I do my grind, I get the exact same money as I would without these buffs, so that's less demand on the central market side of things. And there's a less incentive for me, like what's the point for me to get more AP if it doesn't in turn bring more silver back into my pocket? Because it's a big silver investment 
once you get to those higher AP brackets to hit that next bracket. So having that incentive is important and one of the ways you can have that incentive is within the grind zone. So as much as I'd like to do something like this for Archmans, I am not the person that, be, that will be able to do it because I am not an Archmans grinder. Um, I have spent thousands of hours in Histria. I don't know if I've even spent hundreds of hours in Archmans and it's so long in the past since I've been grinding there. I, I just don't have the ability to be able to bring the quality that I have here into that rotation. Hopefully maybe someone else can look at what I'm doing here that has the experience in Archmans and take my methodology and be able to apply it for that specific grind zone. So now that's out of the way, let's look at what we can to future-proof Histria um, to add incentive for players to push those next AP brackets and DP brackets and also make it, keep it competitive with future content that's coming out in the game because eventually we will be getting those Kafra stones and those new grind zones and if Histria stays in its current state it's just going to be no reason for anyone to come back and grind here whereas if we were to make some tweaks now there will still be a place for Histria to keep it relatively competitive than the newer grind zones. The newer grind zones will overall be better, but if people are finding that the new grind zones are overcrowded because of the lack of servers available, depending on what region you're in, compared to the player base able to grind that area, you can come back to Histria and not feel like you're holding yourself back, but you're still making good money if you have these higher sets of gear especially after the class changes that we've already talked about. So this table here, I will have explained this in a preceding video on how I gathered this information. Um, that will be a 45 minute video. That's only gonna have some audio at the first five minutes to explain what it is. And the rest of it is just the proof of how I collected this, these numbers, how I collected my sample size. Now talking about sample size, this is not particularly a large sample size. Um, you can see here that this goes from 1 to 15, which basically means the first rotation, second rotation, third, fourth, and all the way to the 15th rotation. Then underneath, we have um, three, three different columns over here, or three different rows, I should say. And in these three rows, we have all these numbers. So each one of these rows represents one of the packs in the three tanko room. Um, and as you are aware, there are four packs in the three tanko room, but I'm only including information from three. Now, this is to get uniform information because I think an important thing that needs to be done for all of the rotations in Histria is bring them back into line and bring all of the pools to max capacity and balance on the macro instead of the micro. The micro will even itself out in the long run, the macro was really important. I'll get into what I mean about that a little bit later on. But so these three pools, I've also um, put some sim or some numbers and letters here. So to give you guys an idea of which pull it was. So one E means one Elton was in this uh, pack. One V means there was one vodka in this pack. Five D means there's five Demos slash Burmoles, those little round mobs. I've just kept them as one mob because they're pretty much the same mob. Um, so 5D is five of those mobs, and then the K, so 3K in this situation, there's three Kalkishas, and the T is for Tanko. So in this case, there was zero Tankos. The second one, it was a pool that had one Elton, one Vodkan, six Demos, two Kalkishas, and zero Tankos. And the last one was one that had no Vodkans or Eltons, but it did have six Demos, two Tankos, and two Kalkishas. The reason I did this was to see if there is a significant difference between uh, rotations that have Eltons and that don't have Eltons and have a different combination of mobs. Um, and the reason it is important to track this information is because there are different caps for the mobs in history in terms of how much trash they can drop with a loot scroll. Another important point, these numbers are all with loot scroll active, no aggress buff and not on Asha. Asha does not affect this trash value, but it is important to note that these are not on Asha, just in case there's some back-end coding stuff that may have an unforeseen circum effect that I do not know about. So, as you were saying, there are some mobs that have different maximum trash drop values, main, namely being the Eltons. The Eltons can drop up to six trash when you have a blue loot scroll on, 
and a minimum of one trash and can drop anywhere between that range and that upper limit is higher than the other mobs and history so in theory um, packs with eltons in them should have a slightly higher um, average drop amount of trash compared to packs without and as you can see that is relatively true here i mean even though the sample size is small if we will be rounding up in each of these scenarios because they're all closer to the upper limit than they are the closer the lower limit so you can see that the pack that had no elton in it had an average of 22 trash per um per pack of 10 whereas the rotations with the elton in it had either 23 or 24 as their um as the average trash and you can see that the one that had 24 had one more calcutia compared to the one that had 23 whether or not that's just the rng or if that is that calcutions have a slightly higher chance of dropping higher numbers compared to demos i do not know because again this is a small sample size but i needed this information to be able to go through the rest of the numbers that you will be able to see and if this average combined trash per pack is incorrect it can easily be fixed by the people that know the information so the devs if they're looking at this they can say well actually um during this sample size it may have been true but on average you get 25 trash um per pack of 10 not 23. so it's easily uh, it's easily adjusted obviously for myself i just needed this number to be able to continue to do what you're going to see here now over here we have a little table and a very simple formula a multiplied by b equals c so the one thing i'm trying to figure out to look at the macro is what is c that's the number i'm trying to calculate and what is this c that i'm trying to calculate it's the maximum output for a rotation for a one hour grind and that's with a loot scroll active this is all testing with a loot scroll active and that's a blue loot scroll so how do we figure out what the maximum output of a rotation is it's it's not too difficult well one we need to know how much trash there's a few different ways of doing it the way i've chosen to do it is as you can see here is one figuring out the average uh, trash per rotation so if i was to do a full circle circular rotation in a room how much trash would i get from one full rotation well we know if there is a pack of 10 mobs and we have an average of 23 um, trash dropped for that pack of 10 and in our rotations we're clearing four packs of 10 all we have to do is multiply 23 by 4 and that gives us 92 as you can see here so in one rotation we have we get an average of 92 trash okay well the next important thing is how many rotations can you do within one hour now the way i've decided to calculate this is by first transforming everything into seconds the base unit for me it's just easier to work in seconds than it is in minutes so first things first how many seconds are in an hour well that's very simple to calculate you, you just do 60 multiplied by 60 and was you get 3600 the next we're looking at the respawn rate remember i was saying we're looking at the overview first i'm looking at the maximum output if we were to clear a room at max efficiency and we were grinding that room on cooldown what's the maximum trash we can get from that room because this number is very important that it's kept high enough to not make gear score irrelevant so if we're clearing at the uh, maximum respawn rate all we have to do is divide this number by the respawn rate of that room and then that will give us our b value and then all we have to do is multiply a by b and that gives us c which is what this table is that's underneath and now for some proof of concept if we were just to look at this line over here um it's a night well, just these two numbers a 90 second respawn rate and it says that our maximum output is around 3680 for those of you that are currently grinding black shard room you will know that if you're using a loot scroll with no other buffs um well like aggress you're not using aggress just the loot scroll it, that you are getting around 3600 to 3700 trash per hour when you clear that room on cooldown every single time 
Well, that room is roughly a 90 second uh, respawn rate. It, it fluctuates a little bit because obviously in practice is different than on paper. When you're actually grinding a room, you're not killing that entire pack at the same time. So by the time you come round, you might have to wait a little bit longer because you killed like one or two of the mobs a few seconds later. So the, the respawn rates is in practice a little bit higher than 90 seconds. Um, but on average, it's around a 90 second respawn rate for that room. So this tells me that these numbers are relatively correct here. These, this, this looks right to me um, from the practical side of things of actually doing this in game. So this table here, what it does, it's saying, well, let's, let's take some respawn rates and see what effects it has. If you were to start from 100 and go in increments of five seconds down, what effects it has on the output of that room for one hour the loot scroll and then let's assign some rotations to these because currently we have six rotations um, in Histria and I think it's important to keep these rooms competitive with each other on a micro level but on a macro end of things that there are traits there are places that you should go where your gear is uh, with how you're clearing and it should be future proofed as well because as time goes on the average gear goes up you don't want to keep having to tweak history you want to just tweak it once and make sure it's ready for the future as well so we're going to try and get into all those things but we need to start with looking at the respawn rate to max output ratio and as you can see just by dropping five seconds it does make pretty significant impacts with if you drop your respawn rate by 40 seconds it has almost a 2000 trash per hour difference which is pretty substantial now obviously 40 seconds is actually quite a long time as well but every five seconds doesn't have an impact now this section here is my personal recommendation i'm going to get into why i would recommend these things but just take it with a grain of salt um, more focus on looking at these two numbers and then assigning what you think should go in um, assigning what you think the respawn rate should be for different rooms from here but like i said i've mentioned this a few times but i'm going to mention it again because it is important um, it's taking into consideration that we're clearing four packs in each rotation and each pack has to have 10 mobs in the pack this is key I, this is a change that needs to happen and it should happen every pack should have 10. i know it has different effects on the micro end for trash per hour for classes at certain APs. Some classes that haven't reached the maximum output of the room are going to grind better than other classes. But that should be more of a class adjustment that needs to be made and people shouldn't be punished by the rotation. You shouldn't be looking at the numbers and be like, well, if we look if we look at the numbers here on console compared to PC, we can see with these respawn rates when we have all these packs filled out that there are some classes that are doing really well. That that should you should not punish every other class because of those numbers. If you want to fix it, you can look at those classes, but eventually if you're looking at the grand scheme of things, the, the output, the maximum output is more important than the in-between. So to be able to get a very competitive um, environment in history where the rooms are competitive with each other, you need to have 10 mobs in a pack. I'm going to try not to repeat that too many more times, but you probably will hear me say it a few more times in this video. Now, let's look at respawn rates. So if we have a 1 minute 40 seconds, so that's 100 seconds total uh, respawn rate. We can see that the um, max output that that room can do if you have four packs with 10 mobs in each pack would be 3,312 trash. It's pretty simple how this is calculated. So we, we take our, it's basically using this formula here, but to break it down, it's you take this 3,600, you divide it by your respawn rate, 100, and that gives us B. And then you just multiply it by A, which is our average trash per rotation, 92. Now, like I said, if there is an issue, if this number is incorrect and it should be 25 is the actual average and my just in this small sample size that the numbers didn't turn out as they should be, easy adjustment, you change that to 100 and this changes everything for you down here. Pretty simple. 
I'm going to keep it at 92 because that's what I got from my sample size. Now, as you can see, the small increments of five, it's, it's making little, little changes with your maximum output. I believe on console, in its current state, there should be no room that gives you less than 3,600 trash per hour. A lot of people that I know of grinding history are hitting the upper limit of max clearing the Kalkish rotation at lower APs than ever before because of the current awakening buffs. There are more awakening buffs coming and successions being released, which is going to allow almost every single class's output to be exponentially higher than what it has been in the past. So once we get all these buffs, most people coming to Histria are going to be grinding at maximum output. And the people that don't have the gear for that probably can't even grind Histria because they're gonna get pushed out by the people that can. Unless they are extremely skilled at their class, they're probably gonna lose that jewel for spot and get pushed out of Histria. So that is another completely separate issue, but it is important to bring up. So that's why I think this should be the minimum. And I've personally assigned the five Elton rotation uh, for having this minimum. Currently five Elton is, um, is very strong for people with like low, low, low AP. But the problem is it caps out 3.2 thousand trash. And one of the nice things about five Elton, it is it's got the most Eltons in the in its rotation. That's why it's called the five Elton rotation. Eltons are important type of mob because one, they allow more chances. Every Elton has a chance of dropping a compass part and a tongue rad necklace. Tongue rad necklace is a big money item. And the compass part is a very sought after legendary rare drop that a lot of people want to get. So that's why I've assigned it on the lower end of things. So it's got the lowest max output compared to the other rooms, but I've definitely, I'm asking for it to be increased by a significant amount by 400 plus trash, because right now 3,200 is just too low. So what this will be in the long run, it's gonna have an unforeseen circumstance like effects at the beginning when this, if this patch was to get implemented the way I've um, laid it out in this table, obviously short term, there's gonna be a lot of chaos. People are still gonna be trying to figure out oh, what's the new best room for my class. And it, but in the long run, what's gonna happen is people are gonna start understanding these upper limits and they're gonna be like, well, I've got more AP now. Like maybe I should go to side rotation. Like I can get a bit more consistent money per hour, right? It's like, well, maybe now I should go to black shard room because I'm over clearing side rotation. And then it's like, well, these are three rotations that don't get used a lot. Um, they, they're getting used at the minute because it's overcrowded, but most people that grind these rotations don't grind them by choice. I can tell you if they had a choice, everyone I've talked to would either want to be in at five Elton or black shard, black shard being the spot that most higher end geared people want to be because of the density of Kalkishas. It's an easy rotation to grind and you get the 3,000 3, guaranteed 3,600 trash per hour. Technically, they can get a bit more money by coming to new main rotation, but it's a very awkward grind and I'll go into that into the micro. But this is seeing a, um, this is seeing some people come to it and three tanko, again, it caps out roughly the same as uh, Black Shard Room. The, the, the couple of advantages, it's got three tankos in it, two more than Black Shard Room, so more chance of Tongue Rad Necklaces, along with one more Elton. So it does have some small advantages, but the big disadvantage is it's a very large room um, that is pretty hard to grind. Um, I say pretty hard. It's, 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 got some, it's got a pack in there that's a little bit awkward to clear efficiently. So it's a little bit harder to get that same amount of trash from Black Shard Room as you are from Tanker Room as you would Black Shard Room. So overall, in the long term, what I would expect to see from the community is lower geared players are going to be in these two rotations. And then once they get that bump in AP, they're going to come to Black Shard Room. And then end game players that aren't grinding new areas when they come out. So let's say um, Sakrya, the two man grind zones and the, uh, the new area that drops distortion earrings. Let's say there's some people that don't want to grind their 
because they don't um there's too it's too crowded right there's too many people grinding those rotations they, they don't want to go for the hassle they want to just come to history where it's an easier grind well they have access to these three rooms which are still going to be a little bit more mechanically difficult to grind than these three but they have a higher threshold so a higher upper limit so people that are really geared that don't want to be hassled during their grind because of the lack of servers compared to players grinding these new zones can come back to history and still make competitive money that's the way i've broken it down so we've put five elton on the lower end so that's the beginner course beginners come in and it gives the, these people a higher chance of getting that uh, legendary drop right if you come in the first rotation you're doing is five elton you got a little bit more chance of getting that legendary drop which is it's pretty nice and then you know they start getting a bit more money and maybe they want to come to the um side rotation a little bit less chance of getting tongrad necklaces because you're dropping your eltons however you've still got two of the um the sister elton i, I can't remember their names i think it's like the two car or something like that it's the class that looks very similar to an elton but it's not an elton there's two of those in that room along with two Eltons. So you still got four chances of uh, dropping that compass part instead of five. So it's not a big difference, but you're getting more track. You're getting more consistent money per hour. And then it's like, well, now I just, I've got even too much AP for side rotation. I'm going to come to the Black Shard room. Like, yes, I've got less chance of getting those Tongrad necklaces and Elton parts, but this has got a lot of Kalkishas in this rotation, and that's going to give you more chances of getting those Black Shards that are worth decent money, maybe not as much as the Necklace, but it's still a nice little bump to my money per hour. And I get more consistent money per hour. I'm getting over 4,100 trash per hour here, so this is where I want to be. And then the end game players, right? So players that really have that high AP after we get these new class changes with Succession and PvE buffs, they'll be like, okay, well... I don't want to grind these rotations that are going to be much more popular with the majority of the people grinding Histria. I'm more incentivized to grind these rotations. Three Tanko being the uh, starting point for the endgame player, where it's 4,700 is the cap. It's also a really good room because you have the three Tankos and three Eltons. That's six potential chances at um, Tongrad necklaces. You also, I think, have two Vodkins, I believe. Or maybe three Vodkins. I think it's two. It's two Vodkins as well. They also have a chance of Tongrad necklaces. So it's still pretty good on that end of things. And it's got an okay number of Kalkishas. Not as much as the uh, Black Shard room. But it's, it's a very well-rounded room. And again, your average money per hour is going to be higher. More consistent, I should say, money per hour is going to be higher. And you've got more incentive to now grind this room. And then there's real endgame players. They can take old main rotation, which is the room that's attached to side rotation. Previous, uh, that before, I think it's another name for it's figure eight rotation in the past is what they used to call it. And it was called main rotation in the past. Now it's called old main. And that is the room connected to the side rotation pre-history of changes when we got those extra three rooms. So that's one option. And then a second option is new main rotation. Now, these are two really good options for that end game player if they were to go with the 65 and 60 second respawn rates. Because these are slightly more awkward pulls, um, even with the micro changes that I'm going to be suggesting. But if you have that clear speed and you really want to push yourself to clear as efficiently as possible, your consistent money per hour is going to be considerably higher than the other rotations. This obviously is going to require gear, it's going to require droughts, it's going to require all the buffs that you can get, and it's going to require you to try hard. It's going to require you to be really focused to be able to make these rotations work for you and work for your class. And there's also added benefits. So this, these numbers here are calculated with having four packs in the rotation. Well, there is a special perk about these two specific rotations is you can extend them there is an option to extend uh, old main technically you can extend with three but in my micro changes i'm going to adjust for an extension of two rotations and with new main you can again technically extend with three as well but with the changes i would suggest it would be an extension of two extra packs 
of five. So what does that mean? So two extra packs of five means we're gonna get uh, 23 times two more trash in an average trash per rotation. So 23 times two is 46. 46 plus 92 is 138. So if we change it to 138, I don't know why this one didn't change. Ah, I see. I made a small mistake here. Good thing I caught that. Um, so if we change 92 to 138, we can see that now these have crazy high, um, crazy high end game max outputs that I don't think it's even possible just because of how long it's going to take you to get from pack to pack and group the packs together in a in a way to be able to kill the packs i literally don't think it's be able to possible to hit these numbers that are in old main and new main that's why i think they should have these respawn rates so you can if you try really hard you can always with having more gear get more money in history making it completely future proof for the future so that's the overview look i'm going to change that back to 92 to get the numbers that's the overview look and again if you're interested to see exactly how i got these numbers there will be a preceding video to this one that will show you the test with no edits no cuts beginning to end of what i did to get these trash values all right i hope you enjoyed this part of the video and now let's look at the micro n which is just as important as this macro n that we talked about Okay, so we're going to start this uh, video off with new main. So this is the room that connects to 5 Elton. As you can see, 5 Elton is the room in front of me. This is that big room that connects 5 Elton to 3 Tanker and also to Black Shard room. But when we're not going to start with this one here. We're going to end with this rotation because there's a few tweaks that we're going to make on this end one. So we're going to start over here and not really much needs to change. However, I would strongly recommend to bring the Eastman Elton right here, right? Please bring this Elton back and in its place delete a demo. So I'm just going to be very careful with my positioning. So this will be our next pool. We take these mobs here to the Elton over here and we'd clear it. And that would be at capacity of 10. So this will technically be our second pool, but for the purposes of this demonstration, it's going to be our first one. And the recommendation would be delete this one demo. I can just get close enough to aggro him by himself. Not that demo there. I don't know how much shuriken went through. This demo is currently coming to me, not the one to be deleted. It's this demo that needs to be deleted. And then coming over here, so there's actually nine mobs in this pack. Just add one mob to this pack. And the reason being, the reason we're deleting one and adding one here is, as you can see, these demos, they can't aggro far enough to this pack. So you'd be deleting the demo to the right hand side over there and adding one more mob to this pack to bring it to 10. And then you'd clear this one out as you normally would. Let me just get rid of this guy for the demonstration purposes. Okay, so we cleared a few few mobs out to demonstrate. Um, so this is the third pack that I'm showing you. So you've got three mobs in front of me. Four, five, six, seven. There's one extra mob here. Eight, nine, ten. And then this is the extra one. Eleven. So as you can see, this uh, tutu car isn't aggroing to me. So over here, I'd recommend either deleting oops, the 2-2 car or demet, uh, deleting a, do, a demo up to, uh, up to you guys which one you would delete to bring this to a nice uh, 10 mobs in the pack. If you are to delete one of these mobs, like I said, either this 2-2 car or just one of the demos that are up here, um, whichever one it is, it doesn't really matter. And so for this last pool, which is really going to be your first pool in, um, in a realistic scenario, uh, there's just a lot of edits that need to be made because there's just way too many mobs in front of us. So we need to cut it down to 10. But I know the devs don't like things to feel empty. 
So the way I'd suggest to cut it down is by taking away the three demos next to the Watchtower. The Watchtower can stay there, but keep the uh, the Kalkisha and the Vodkan. So we're going to delete these three guys. I'm going to try and carefully surgically remove them. And the reason we're also cutting out these three is because they can't aggro far enough to get to the D, to the Elton. We're also going to cut out that um, Tutu car. So now this is the next part, right? What I would recommend is probably cut out one demo here. Oops. And one demo um, from the other, the pack on the wall. So we get... We cut out one demo here and one demo here. So it's this this section near the entrance isn't empty. And this section here doesn't get too empty either. And then that will take us to a nice neat pack of 10. Where it's a good distribution. It takes a second to aggro everything together because you're pulling it from different um, areas. And things don't look empty. And now we have a nice neat pile of 10 mobs. That does require some... I wouldn't say skillful pulling, but it requires you to uh, do some movement skills to pull efficiently. And then that is our average four packs for our rotation. But obviously there's two more packs in this room, so I'll get to those in a minute. Okay, so for these last two packs at the end of the room here, now this is not what people, people are not going to incorporate this in their main pack of four for when they are clearing. Because one, it'll be a very large circle, and two, there'll be no Elton. Like, you're, you're cutting out an Elton for a tanker, which is like the replacement, which is just not worth it. I mean, yes, the Bolton's technically the replacement, but the Bolton doesn't drop Tongrad necklaces, right? So it's just, it's not worth the trade-off. Eltons are the most important mob. So these two packs at the end will be used as, like, an, ex an extension if you really require it, which a lot of people are not going to do. Even like where I am right now, I'm not going to require this. Like this is super end game prepping history for the future kind of changes here. So as you can see here, we've got one, two, three, four. We've got five mobs here. Now I'm going to be careful to pull these next ones. So this two, two car makes six. Kalkisha makes seven. Uh, Demo makes eight. And the Tanko makes nine. And finally, the Vodka there makes ten. So this works out just fine because this demo just about has the aggro range to get to this uh, Bolton and not the aggro. But you have to be a little bit careful you don't get knocked back too far because if you do that, um, demo does get de -aggroed. So that will be the change that we made here. There we go. And then over here, we're just going to delete uh, this demo. This demo doesn't need to be here. It doesn't quite have the aggro range to get to the next pack um, nice and smoothly. So we're going to get rid of this guy. And then this last pack here, we got one, two, three, four. We've only got five mobs here. See, as you can see, we have to add, we need to try and add back five mobs into this pack. Now, this is the sixth and final pack in the rotation. Well, actually, six mobs. I didn't see this 2 2 car over here. So that should be six, right? We've got in front of me one, two, three. Four, five, yeah, so six mobs. So we need to add four four mobs to this pack. If if the uh, pre-mob changes, the mobs weren't here to be able to do this, and it's too difficult to code in brand new mobs, it causes issues, just get it to as close to 10 mobs as possible to fill out the pack. And still, in terms of, in terms of uh, optimization, we are cutting more mobs, even with adding four mobs here, we are cutting more mobs out of this this room than we're adding. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. Because remember, over here, we are straight up cutting one mob out. In these previous rotations, we're kind of trading mobs off. So there's no change. There's no add or reduction. We're just taking one out and substituting for another one. But this pack, when we talked about, we're straight up cutting one mob out. And I think this is five or six mobs that we're cutting out of this pack. So let's go with the low end. I think it's six. I'm pretty sure it's six over here. Uh, but let's just say it's five. So we're cutting a total of six mobs out. So adding four additional over there, still, you know, in terms of optimization, it should still technically be better, right? So I'm trying to keep that into account when looking at all these different rooms. But if the game is optimized enough for this room to run well, 
on the older generations of consoles, then all the other rooms we should talk about, will, will, which we will be talking about, will have no issues because they're going to be mainly capped at 40, uh, 40 mobs in the room in total, which is a lot less than what we're seeing in this room currently. All right, I'm going to catch you guys in the next rotation. Okay, I'm going to try and be quick with this room here because I'm borrowing off someone at the minute. As we can see, this pack in front of us has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there's actually an extra mob up here. There we go. It just spawns. That's eight. So two mobs need to be added to this pack to bring it to ten. Um, and yeah, that would bring this one to ten. It can be any two mobs, demo, two demos, two Kalkishas, a demo and a Kalkisha, a demo and a Vodka, and what, whatever combination uh, you deem fit. So two mobs to be added to this one to bring it to 10. Okay, so coming to this next pack here, we got one, two, three, four, five mobs here. Then we got one, two, three, four, five mobs here. So this pack is absolutely fine and it doesn't need uh, any mobs added or taken away. I actually aggroed that demo because this Vodkan uh, got aggroed, which shouldn't have happened. So I'm going to do my best not to kill him as I'm clearing. I'll just de-aggro him by bringing him down here real quick. He shouldn't be able to come this far down. There we go. He de-aggroed. So yeah, this no changes need to be made to this rotation here. This one is already at capacity with 10 mobs. All right, I'm just going to ignore that guy because he can't come that far up. And then this one here, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is at 10 max capacity. This also needs no changes. And we're just going to clear it out as we normally would. So... So far, it's only two extra mobs from the first two Elton pool that needs to be added to bring it to 10. And lastly, uh, it's this pack here that's got aggroed. Okay, so for this one here, it's going to need a couple of mobs as well. I'd suggest maybe adding, there used to be two demos over there that could be added. But we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven mobs here. The Kalkisha next to the Elton is a part of the other pack. So adding two demos and then one other mob that used to be here to bring this to 10 would give us four packs of 10. And that is all you need to do to bring this rotation to max capacity. Nice and easy. Uh, if, if there isn't an extra mob to add here, just the two demos that used to be there will bring this pack to nine, which is pretty close. If one of the packs is one off, it's not a big deal, but preferably um, we want four packs of 10. And let me just say thank you, thank you. So, 5 Elton, not a lot of changes need to be made. Uh, just a couple of mobs to the first pool and a couple of mobs to the last pool brings that one to max capacity. Okay, I'm having some good luck. Luckily, this person over here, Genghis Khan, is uh, letting us borrow his room. He is on a loot scroll, so I do appreciate it. Uh, this first pack over here by uh, this entrance, no changes need to be made at all. So keep this one exactly the same. Uh, next pack, again, no changes need to be made. So we're going to keep this one exactly the same. And I've got to be real careful here. There we go. And there's an art of pulling that pack. Easier to do if you've got a range skill for sure. So nothing needs to be changed from this pack here either. Because that's at max capacity. Next pack, again... Nothing needs to be changed here either. There's a few different ways of pulling these uh, packs, but they all roughly end up the same way. But as you can see, we are at max capacity. We can't aggro more mobs. And finally, this last one here, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mobs. So we just need two mobs added to this pack and everything will be at max capacity. So just a double count, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, there's eight mobs here. And if you add two mobs back to this uh, pack over here, that brings everything back at max capacity. So everything will be, um, every pack will have 10 mobs and you have four packs to clear this room. And then 
that will align all the numbers to match the spreadsheet. Okay, so now the three tanko room. Uh, we're going to start with this pack by uh, this entrance over here that leads to new main. Uh, this pack is at max capacity. Nothing needs to change here. There are exactly 10 mobs. So this one is the perfect amount. Let me just double check. Instead of counting. Yeah. Yes. Actually, no, I remember in the testing, I already counted the mobs in the testing. There's only one pack that needs to change here. <clears throat> well, technically two. I'll get into the technical reason why two impacts need to change when we get to the last pool. But this first one here, nothing needs to change. So this next pack over here needs two mobs added to it because there's only eight mobs. So we've got two calculations there. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we need two mobs added to this pack. There used to be a bunch of demos and stuff right here that have been taken out in the mob reductions. So adding back some demos, if there was a Kalkisha there, that would be preferable, obviously. But just adding two mobs to this one um, will bring this into a max uh, max pool with 10 mobs in it, which will be important. This next pack here, I actually, I guess this one needs to change. One, one mob needs to get removed. I would suggest either a demo or the tutu, uh, the tutu car, however you pronounce that. So either one of the demos or this two to car to get removed, please don't remove a Kalkisha or a Vodkin, just so we don't have uh, a spare tire. We don't want an extra mob left over uh, messing with our, next, with our next pool. So that's the reasoning behind that one. It's not a big deal if you leave it one over, but it's just quality of life. And if you did mob reduction to increase performance, that's a free mob you can cut out right there with no negative impact on the player base. And then this pack here, right? So this one, again, cut one mob out, either this 2-2 car or a demo. But what this, I would highly, 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 highly recommend this. Please cut these four demos and add back the demos that used to be here, right? So these four demos that are following me, remove them, keep the Kalkisha, and add back the mobs that used to be here because demos have a very short aggro range in comparison to other mobs. So let me show you. Normally you'd have to stand here. The, the, Cal the Elton took a couple of steps forward. And what happens is when you bring the demos over here, oh, look at that. They, they de-aggro. And it forces you to stand. It forces you to do one of two things. One is pull, is aggro the Elton and pull him towards the demos. Or two is stand in front of the demos uh, stand in front of the Elton, and so you'll be standing roughly where the Elton is standing right now. You'll be standing right here in front of the Elton that's here. And you can't kill the pack at the same time because you're not getting back attack damage on the Elton. And it slows things down. It's a minor grievance, but it's going to have a big positive effect on the player base if you were to remove those four demos and just add them over here. Or at the very least, those two demos at the end because you can kind of squeeze. If you're very careful with your positioning, you, you can get the two demos that are slightly closer to the Elton to aggro properly. But again, just make sure you've got 10 mobs in this pack. Currently, there's 11. So as you can see, we can't aggro that last demo. So cut a demo out um, or cut the 2-2 car out in this pool. And that's all that needs to be done to the three tanko room. And then three tanko room will be, um, will be just as good as the other rotations. Well, it'd be, I say just good, it'll be competitive with the other rotations. And the draw of coming here would be for those higher um, max value trashes per one hour clear. So, you know, we want a, a, a lower respawn rate over here. So it's got an advantage on, let's say, Tanko room. Sorry, Tanko room. On, um, let's say, five Elton and a Black Shard room. The advantage of coming here is there's 70 second respawn rates if you were to go through the examples that I gave earlier making this a uh, higher max output for your one hour of time. Now I'll meet you on the other side of the map. Okay, so let's talk about side rotation next. Uh, this first pack upon entering, nothing needs to change. This one is at max capacity, very well thought out and well designed. So well done here. And we get that last guy. So that's our 10th mob. As you can see, we can't pull any other mobs. So first one here, spot on. Let's get on to the next one in a second. Okay, so next pack, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. 
So again, very well thought out. As you can see, we can't aggro any more mobs. Nothing needs to change here either. So next pack is we're going to have some grievances. Um, I'd recommend, first of all, I went too far there. Just the demo, not the Kalkisha, but just deleting this demo over here. Let me get them to de-aggro real quick. Oh, Burmol, I guess I should say. So this Burmol, uh, delete this Burmol, please. <coughs> um, anyway, so going back on over here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six mobs over here. This requires us to pull from the other pack, which really makes this... Uh, oh, he finally got it. So we had six mobs here. Sorry, I got distracted there. So we've got six mobs in this pack over here. So four mobs need to be added. There were mobs up here that you can add back. Um, plenty of mobs around that can be added back. So easily, it's easy to get this one back to max capacity like it used to be in the past. Just add back the mobs that used to be here. So there we go. That's your, uh, that's this one fixed. Now for this next one. So for this next one here, uh, let's have a little talk about it. So we got one, two, three, four. We got five mobs up here. That's fine. So this increases uh, the length of the pool as well, which is necessary because it's a smaller room. An extra Kalkish aggroed up to me, so that's six. We have Bolton, seven. Vodkin, eight. Demo, nine. Kalkish, ten. Right? Delete all the extra mobs that are there. Um, one thing you can do to make it look more even, so less empty, is remove two of the Demos that are up here, right? And then instead of removing all four demos over here, you can remove two of them. I'd recommend you have to remove this one, which is the one that we've already mentioned about removing, and probably this guy over here. So you have 10 mobs. And the 2-2 two -two car, I think, has to get removed as well. So you want 10 mobs here, evenly distributed. It takes a bit of time to pull it, right? Because you're going to have to come over here to aggro some mobs. You're going to have to come over here to aggro some mobs. So this pool is going to take a bit longer and that's fine. That artificially slows down the grind. So that way you're going to have 10 packs of 10. Um, easy to pull and it's it's a nice stepping stone for newer players. They go from 5 Elton, a simple room, into side rotation. Another simple room, into black shard room. Another simple room. And then they can start branching out into 3 Tanko, new main and old main. So that side rotation done. Now let's go uh, check out uh, old main rotation. Okay, so we are in the final uh, room that this is old main rotation. Now we're just starting with this Elton in the corner over here as our first pull. This is a nice even 10 mobs. We don't need to uh, change anything here. As you can see, we can't pull any more mobs because we are at max capacity. So nothing's changed here, very well thought out. Um, so this one stays the same and I'll see you in the next pool. Okay, so for this next pool here, this Bolton, uh, this two car Bolton, cut him out. Uh, every single mob in front of me can be cut out if it increases performance, if you don't want it to seem empty, put a wall, like this gap that's in front of me, just fill the gap with a wall so it looks like it doesn't look like an empty room. It just looks like the end of the room uh, starts right here instead of all the way back there. None of those mobs are required. Okay, so now we've cut this Bolton out. We've got these three mobs. That's one, two, three. This Kalkisha makes four. Bolton makes five. This one makes six, seven. And the one at the bottom makes eight. So what this is telling us is we need two more mobs to be added to this rotation. Um, and then that will bring this at a nice full 10 mobs per pack uh, for this pack, not this rotation, sorry. So add two mobs to this pack and that brings us at 10 mobs for this pack. Okay, so next room here. This is a problematic room. So what we're going to do, first of all, first and foremost, get rid of this Bolton. This two car Bolton, please delete it, it's not needed. Right, now they've deleted this guy, there's actually exactly 10 mobs in front of me. But, please, delete one of the Boltons. Uh, I don't care which one, I don't think anyone cares which one. 
just delete one of them and add back one other mob. That's all that needs to be done here. As you can see, if I was to aggro this guy, I will not be able to aggro anything from the other room because we are at max capacity. So delete one bolt in here and then add back one of the previous mobs, whether it's a vodka and a Kalkish or a demo, completely up to you. Um, add one back so this room is at max capacity, but with only one Bolton. We don't want two Boltons in this room. Okay, now that this room is out of the way, next, next pool is pretty simple. There's eight mobs here. So you can see there's four on my right and there's four on my left. So that's a total of eight mobs. That Kalkisha is a part of the other rotation over there. So please ignore him and just to prove it, we can aggro one more mob from this pack and we can't aggro anymore. So all that needs to be done, I actually remember these two mobs. There was literally a Kalkisha right around here and a Vodkan right around here. Please add those two mobs back and then this uh, pack becomes a 10 pack, uh, 10 mob pack as well. Okay, so now let's talk about the two extra packs in front of us that can be used as an extension. There's actually a really cool thing about this room. Um, if you were to make the changes, you could have two different ways you can clear this room. You can go the way I showed originally, or you can have these two Elton plus the mobs in front of me. But the pools are really awkward in these mobs in front of me so ideally they should really be changed because you're not going to get consistency which is the main issue that um, a lot of people don't like with grinding is you want you want the grind to feel good which requires some kind of symmetric symmetry and consistency that right now it's a bit too chaotic um it's a bit too chaotic at the minute in these two pools so the recommended recommended changes i would make keep this uh keep this stuff exactly the same Right, they're gonna come over here. And hopefully I aggroed the Kalkish over there. Right, so this is max capacity that we're at. Therefore, we don't need these four demos or these two 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 cars. The the two two car on my left, you can you can have an argument for keeping it, but preferably we want to delete all these mobs to my right. So these four demos and this two two car. And maybe the 2-2 car, that's on my left there. But that's a bit more subjective. So now I'm just going to clear out the mobs that I recommended to be deleted. So this doesn't mess with your pools. Maybe these two demos that are on the wall. You could probably keep these two demos that are on the wall. That would actually work, thinking about it. It won't, it won't affect the pools. It shouldn't affect the pool here. Because what you don't want, when you have a really high um, ex extensive density like we do in this rotation it messes with the pools when you're trying to go really fast which just it knocks you off your game and it doesn't feel good to grind but maybe those two demos so i'd maybe just delete these two demos and the two two card that i already killed and um you can keep those two demos i'm just waiting for this guy to reset there we go you can keep those two demos that are on the wall. Uh, thinking about it, that could actually work out pretty well. Because we need to add some mobs on the other side. So if you keep these guys here, that's one, two, three. If you keep the two, two card, that's four, five, six with a demo, seven, eight. So we've got eight mobs here. So just add two more mobs. So delete those two demos and add two mobs on this side. I accidentally, um, I accidentally aggroed the Kalkishas that were uh, on the other pack over there. So that's why we're over capacity. And this guy's also respawned. So there's a couple of respawn issues. But basically, just add two mobs on this side. I remember there used to be like a little watchtower here with some mobs around it. So you can add two of the mobs back over here and just delete the two, um, two, two cars that are on the edge and probably, sorry, the demos that are on the edge and keep the two demos that are on the ring over here. And then that will make this uh, this pool a lot smoother. Okay, so the last pack we're going to talk about is this one here. Now, I doubt this one needs to honestly change. And I doubt it's ever going to be included in any pools. Because having a six-pack pool, even with future changes, should have history of future proof. But, I mean, you, you can bring this to capacity of 10. Um, it's not needed, but it can be done. So currently, there is two three four five mobs here 
So five more mobs will need to be added to this pack to bring it to 10. I remember there used to be some pack mobs over here back in the day and there were some more mobs on behind this uh, Bolton as well. If you were to bring those back, that would bring this to a 10 and technically old main, which is what people call this rotation, can be used as a five pack. Wait, could be technically used as a seven pack rotation. However, I don't believe that will be necessary, but it's, it's an additional option that can be done. But again, I don't believe that's necessary. All right, so that is the end of the history of changes that we need to see in the future. So we've gone over the macro, we've gone over the micro. The numbers are in the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet will be linked. I'll put a key in here as well to make it easier to read if someone isn't using the video as guidance. I am also aware that in the future, there are some changes that are planned out for Histria to add some kind of mechanic that spawns like a pillar or something that like continuously spawns mobs that would definitely help with trash per hour. That's really cool, but the foundation still needs some work. So if the foundations are brought up, overall, it's going to really help the console community out. Because Histria, even though it is very much improved to what it used to be compared to the first time the 40% change was made, it is still a far cry to the potential that it originally had before there are any changes. And with these change, and if changes like this were to be implemented, that would bring all the rotations back into competition with each other, and there should be less fighting between people for two very specific rotations that everyone is fighting over currently with how crowded history is and also allow some legway for the future when new areas to come out to keep some of the history of rotations competitive with those new areas giving players the option to come back here even if they don't feel like they need to in the future all right guys thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed and i'll catch you in the next video